Uh, next up, we have Adrian Wolzewiski, numerical validation as a critical aspect in bringing R to the clinical research. Hi. Hi, Adrian. Hello. Uh, let me share my desktop. Okay. Okay. Please tell me if it's visible. Also. Yes? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Hello. Oh, thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Adrian Olszewski. I know it's very hard to pronounce. I represent the 2KMM CRO company entirely based on our, a small Polish uh, local CRO with global reach. And today I'm going to introduce you to a hot topic, another kind of validation. We had already two presentations about that. This one is about numerical validation. So let me start. Uh, since the presentation is rather long, uh, I will jump over subsequent slides. You can please uh, reach me for the full pr presentation. And I believe the Q&A, the questions will be rather, it will be better to ask them on, on Slack. I'm, I'm, I hope I will fit in 10 <laughs> minutes. Okay, first, uh, the 2KMM, we are a small CRO with full coverage of clinical research biostatistics. That's important because we do everything with R. So from trial design to the final statistical report. Uh, what we discuss here might likely concern you because, uh, well, it comes from reality, from real needs. What we do, mostly observational and RCT trials, so far 21, but uh, these are not submitted to FDA or European agency. We aim at the, our first uh, RCT when the sponsor uh, permits for that. So we are preparing, preparing for this. And we use our four trial design, data querying, trial data analysis, full coverage, producing TFLs, auxiliary additional, additional tools. Well, before I start, let me introduce you to the situation, which is very weird. Uh, both S and R statistical packages are de facto industry standards in statistical analysis. And these are used everywhere, especially in biosciences like epidemiology, medicine, and so on. But uh, in pharma, for years, R has been used kind of silently. Only recently, in the last, let's say, five years, R got uh, reborn officially. People, uh, companies started admitting they use it officially. So currently the main area of, of use for, for, for error is a trial design, PKPD, so pharmacokinetics, dynamics, various simulation, research and development, reporting, graphics. But it's hardly to find submissions to FDA, for instance. Well, we can find a lot of examples of the use of R when we browse uh, Google, for instance. We can find a lot of statistical analysis plans, uh, documents issued by the FDA about the use of R in clinical research. We can find a lot of examples. I will jump over the slides quickly, but you can find them, you know, uh, when I finish my presentation, you will, you will be able to find them uh, in a more peaceful <laughs> manner. You can find also examples of uh, guidelines issued by the FDA about the U that mention R officially. This is excellent. You can find examples of contribution from top pharma companies. You can find user stories, also especially those published on the R Studio website. So if it's also good, what went so wrong? Well, many prize, let's think about that. Many prize are as the right choice for statistical analysis, as the cutting edge statistical software, right? Uh, people trust her when it comes to trial design, which is essential for clinical trials, for pharmacokinetics analysis. It is used for important uh, research and development. But when it comes to you run simple statistical analysis for the submission, everyone starts hesitate. Is this right or not? There are lots of facts and myths about the use of our own clinical research. I have a presentation I encourage you to visit after, after all, which address some of the facts and myths of using R in clinical research. But the most important information is that R can be used in clinical research. FDA, FDA has nothing against that, but R has to be validated and documented properly. And uh, FDA issued documents about the validation of software. You can find the documents over the internet. Please pay attention to the links because sometimes it, it, they, they get invalidated, they get, you know, updated. Uh, and also the European agency, EMA, issued similar document and it states that the software should be reliable. 
Well, Air has a document that is the famous Air FDA document, which address those, uh, which address fits the requirements pretty well. But it uh, applies mainly to the basic base Air set of packages. But actually, in real uh, in real settings, in real situations, we will use a plenty of packages, right? And this is exemplary set from one of my analyzers. Uh, validation is a very broad term, and the scope isn't precisely defined. However, lots of information are covered. The validation isn't just about documenting or measuring KPIs. However, this is important step and shouldn't be taken lightly. It should be reliable, and we at 2KMM understand this as a numerical compliance. So before we document anything, packages, installation, or measure picky, uh, packages quality, we should first, in our opinion, ensure that the code returns valid numbers. So the one who really needs the validation is not actually an agency, it's you, because you will pay the cost if the software returns incorrect numbers. As a matter of fact, uh, older packages um, uh, don't have exhaustive unit test coverage. And even if it uh, offers that, there's some, we, we have a lot of issues on the GitHub pages. And however, the unit test pass well, there are lots of issues. Why? Because it needs collaboration and fresh view, a good example how fresh view can catch lots of issues. So the unit test is not enough. There is no global authority behind that. Nobody controls it in, you know, in, in general. And last but not least, there's the results of the unit tests are not often subjected to be, you know, uh, for comparisons against other statistical software. And this is important because whether you like it or not, such is still the industry standard, major industry standard. And our work will be validated very likely with SAS or SATA, WinNonLin and other statistical packages. Sometimes the result may be different. It doesn't necessarily mean it is wrong. Maybe it's differently parameterized or differently expressed. But in any case, you should be able to explain this. There are various variety of reasons for which you may get different results. Errors, different algorithms for quantile, skewness, rounding, different way of storing floating point numbers, random number generators different settings of options, default options, like sum of squares, contrast, different algorithms, estimation procedures, and origins of data, and lots of lots other examples when the discrepancy may occur. Error may be also in, um, internally a bit discrepant from method to method. So you may not even realize that there are discrepancies until a reviewer asks you to explain this. For instance, the mixed models. Oh, this is a typical example. Uh, internet provides a plethora of examples where you can see how many differences uh, occur between R and other statistical packages. So R should be validated numerically. How? You can compare the output to other reference statistical software that you trust. You can ask someone to do this or do the, this on yourself. You can uh, use a, pub, all of the published examples in manuals, public released, issued by the vendors of the software. You can also inspect the source code, which is very helpful, but works only for the simplest cases. Also, you have to decide when the outcomes agree and to what extent, because very likely you will get discrepancies. Problems, there is a very dynamic ecosystem. So packages are updated frequently, and most often, first, it comes to GitHub rather than CRAN. Uh, what worked yesterday may be invalidated obsolete tomorrow. And there are lots of examples when a single issue, fixed issue, requires you to upgrade the entire air core, which might invalidate the analysis you already have. And however, there are fixes for this. It still shows how many potential, there are potential places where your analysis that worked yesterday may stop working tomorrow after the update of your packages. Ah, numerical validation really consumes time really, but it is an incremental process. You don't need to validate everything. You can do this incrementally, only the functions you really need, not entire whole packages. It is doable by a single person, but it would be perfect to have a central repository that would be trusted by regulators like FDA, like CROs who could contribute and provide their own data sets and test cases, and which would provide the explanation for all the discrepancies, because this really shows you if it's just a matter of different parametrization or settings, or there is an error or something different. 
So to sum it up, numerical validation is important for your safety, not only to pleasure guide, you know, the authorities. Air differs from SAS and other systems. It is dynamic. Discrepancies occur quite often, so please don't ignore them. And this is perfectly doable. So please consider the numerical, the numerical validation. Uh, and well, that's all. Thank you very much. Adrian, fantastic job. I'm going to try this thanks to Nate. One second. I'm sorry? Does that sound like an applause? Ah, okay. okay. Anyways, thank you again, Adrian. Appreciate the uh, appreciate the, uh, the, the the talk. Uh, questions directed. Anyone has any questions? We'll pass them on to you through the uh, Slack channel.